What's up guys? Welcome to the last Tutorial Linux Processes video. Uh, we've covered quite a bit about processes and we're going to move on after this to the Linux file system. Now this is sort of the intersection of processes and the file system. The Linux kernel provides sort of the state of running processes in a virtual file system that's mounted at proc. So that's slash PROC. I'm going to quit HTOP here. Uh, after last video, this should look very familiar. Now, what may have looked like a mystery or like the matrix when you first started watching these videos, I hope this makes sense now, right? You know how to use HTOP. If you don't, go back and watch the last video. So now you know how to monitor processes, you know about niceness, you know about scheduling priorities, sort of how things work, signals that processes can receive and send. Um, states they can be in, and how that all works together to have a usable system. Now, tools that we've been using, like PS to list the processes, or TOP and HTOP, what they're doing is they're not actually talking directly to the kernel and saying, hey kernel, could you give me the state of this and this process or whatever's running right now? The kernel does that automatically. It has a virtual file system that we can see uh, you'll learn all about this command later, but this shows us mounted file systems, and you can see there it is, our proc file system. It's a special kind of file system, and it's mounted at the default place, proc. Now, the proc file system is where the kernel posts information about currently running or stopped or you know, active processes. Uh, if you list it, which should be your first instinct to get a feel for what's in there, you can see there's all kinds of stuff, and there's all these numbers. Well, each of these directories is a PID, a process ID. So this is divided into directories that are named after the PID of the process that they describe. So for example, uh, what's the process where we always know what the PID is? That would be 1 in it. So if we say, eh, it's irrelevant, but let's say proc1, this is proc, and then the process ID, right, 1. And actually, let's pipe that into less so we can take a nice look at it. And you can see there's all these things, very nice. And what's strange about this? Well, the file size seems to be zero for all of these. Well, that's because these are created as they are read, they're updated on the fly. So if we want to see one of them, we can't just list. So first, to start inspecting this stuff, you're going to want to be root. And if you've got pseudo powers, then go ahead and do a pseudo and then I for an interactive shell session. And then put in your password and you become root. You can see it right there. So we'll just move into the proc file system and have a look. So there you go. You see a whole bunch of process numbers as directories, and that's what we're going to focus on right now. And let's have a look inside ints, because we already know what this is. So let's start catting things. Is there a command line something? Yes. And you can see that's some strange thing that was run to start the process. Uh, let's see what directory it's in right now. CWD. It's in root. Let's check out open file descriptors. Let's look at memory mapping information. Lovely. So you can see this is a lot of the raw information about processes straight from the kernel. And you're not getting this as a file that has some information saved in it, but it's being shoveled into this file as you want to read it. So it's always exactly up to date. Now, feel free to play around and list and cat things here. Now, the only warning that I have for you is that some of these things uh, will be binary information, which means that you will be looking directly at the matrix. No, um, which means that your shell uh, bash, in our case, uh, won't be able to decode it properly, and it will just look like a bunch of gibberish. 
As long as you're okay with that, you'll be okay. But again, looking directly at the matrix for too long is not recommended. But just to give you a general overview of this stuff, a basic list of the types of files you'll see in here, that is what these things are, just generally. Now init is a little bit different because it's a very special process that the kernel starts, but CMD, the file CMD will generally be uh, what command the process is currently executing. The CMD line is what the how the process was called, so the command line of the process. CWD, uh, if you list that out, it'll uh, show you the link to where the process currently is operating from. Environ is, where's the environ? There it is. This will show you the environment variables. So this is like for a user, a path, which we'll talk about later. The maps, which we've already seen, it's just above here. This is memory mapping information. If you want to see like what shared libraries uh, this thing is using, SO libraries it's looking at. And then stat M for um, memory. Super, this is nice, right? I don't think, I, I could probably read some of these, but I'm not even gonna try. I'm just gonna embarrass myself. That's right, you can tell. These things are made to be parsed with other programs. This is not exactly a human readable format, but it's good for the processes we know and love, like top H, top PS. They can read this out, parse it with something like, for example, you know, they're, they're doing nothing else other than, you know, we already know delimiter we'll do a space and get, you know, field one. Well, you know, you can see how the commands are starting to put this together, right? This is how larger and more complex commands are built from simple ones that are simply being chained together, like with piping, output redirection. So you take something and you start chopping pieces out and we it's agreed upon in which order this is written in here. So we always know that the first one is however much memory it's using or whatever it is. I apologize for not knowing. And yeah, so you're very rarely gonna be looking around in here, but you should sort of know what this is about. You don't have to memorize this. You should just feel comfortable looking at this and saying, yeah, okay, this is a bunch of stuff where the kernel basically posts information about running processes. And I know that most processes are going to sort of have the same stuff in here that I can go look at. So there you go. Now you know where it comes from when you look at these fancy commands like HTOP. You realize how much work it's actually doing for you or how much time it's saving you because you don't have to go chase stuff like this around. Now the last thing I want to talk about is uh, strace. This is really useful, but this is starting to get pretty deep into the rabbit hole. If you really are a professional admin, you should know this tool. Uh, this is a way to attach to processes and really see what they're doing in a way that is very difficult to do otherwise. So strace, I might do a, a video just on this at some point because it's, you know, it's a fair chunk to learn, but this will give you uh, an unsurpassed view into a Linux process. And you can sort of attach and detach this from processes, that's the term. Have a look at the documentation if you're really interested. Um, if enough people ask me, I will do a video about this, uh, but it's something that I'm actually not super comfortable with yet, so I'd have to learn it first. So there you go, I'm leaving you with the manual. Good, so now we're really into the file system. I mean, we now know what proc is for. And that's really sort of, let's say one, let's say 5% of the whole thing that you need to know. And in the next video, we're gonna get very deep into the file system. And I will give you the guided tour of what all these other directories contain. Uh, hint, the secrets of the universe is the correct answer. Good, so now I have taken the blinders from your eyes and shown you the matrix itself, the slash proc directory. So if you're finding these videos useful, please subscribe. It's good to know that it's actually helping people. And if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I will do my damnedest to answer every single one of them. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.